everybody. This is Keith Gleason, host of Indie Comics Relay, creator of the Mighty Mascots, and promoter for the Plastic City Comic Con. And I'm here with another comic review. Before I get into that, just a reminder, Plastic City's coming up July 20th, Saturday. $10 admission. We have Jimmy Hart. We just um, we have another Marvel guest that we're working on right now. Should have that announcement very soon. Um, we have a ton of local creators, over 150 tables. It's going to be awesome. The best con for the lowest price you can get anywhere. So check it out. Also go to HeroEnvy.com. You can get all my comics right now. Mighty Mascots, Reckless Chronicles, Kids Switch, all the books that I've worked on. Swamp Tales, they're all available there as well. So check that out. All right. We are going to be reviewing Thundercats number one. Now, this is from Dynamite Comics. The writer on this is Declan Shalvey. The artist is Drew Moss. The colorist is Shiera de Frankia, I think is how you say it. I am horrible with names. So if I uh, butchered that, uh, please forgive me. Uh, the second colorist is Martina Pigner Dolly. Again, I apologize. Letterer is Jeff Eckleberry, and the main cover artist is David Nakayama. Um, short summary of the book. So this is um, a reboot of the 80s cartoon Thundercats. It Basically, the first issue is very much in the tone of what they're doing over on, on Robert Kirkman's uh, Skybound Entertainment is almost like a reboot of the whole Thundercats franchise, starting with, you know, the pilot episode of the cartoon. And um, so if you've seen the Thundercats cartoon, the, like the five ish or the five episode series that started off the whole cartoon series, then you kind of know what this issue is. It kind of takes it from there. And that's also car kind of what I didn't like about it. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit too. Um, so I want to do a critique. So, so, so let me critique the story real quick. It, I think this comic is perfect. If you are a new fan of Thundercats for an old fan, I think you might be a little bored with this because like I said, it is a retread of the first mini series that they had in the cartoon, you know, um, just doing the origin of the Thundercats leaving Thundera and finding, you know, Third Earth and all that stuff. All the stuff with, with Jaga and, you know, Lionel learning to be the king of the Thundercats. All that stuff's in there. And so I, I guess I was a little underwhelmed reading it. Um, now, I won't say it was horrible. Like, it, it's, it's just I think I felt like you know, I've read this a million times and it didn't seem to be much different about it. Um, you know, the, the differences that I saw were more in the artwork and which I'll talk about that in a minute here. But um, I think this is a series that that will get better as it goes. That's like my initial that's like my gut feeling. Um, I'm waiting to get number two. I should I actually have it. I haven't read it yet. Um and I plan on giving it at least a couple issues before I make the final judgment on whether I'm going to keep reading this or not. One, of, It was one of the cartoons I liked as a kid. I wasn't one of my favorites, but I certainly liked watching it, you know, and that could also be why I'm, I, I'm a little less um, patient, you know, with the first issue. That's just kind of a retread. So, but overall, like, it's not bad. It, it's, it, I also understand like as a comic creator, you know, doing a first issue, you have to jam a lot of stuff in there to get somebody's attention, you know. So, you know, they they try to jam it all in there, you know, Mumra, the the mutants of Plundar, you know, things like that is all in there. And then also the origin. So I get it. I get it. You know, it just to me it felt like a little underwhelmed, I guess is the best way to describe it. Um the artwork by Drew Moss was really good though. It very um cartoony i guess and very like um it felt like it it was very animated like the show if, if they took the show and just pulled uh, you know cells off of it and someone traced over it, it kind of looks like that you know it kind of looks like that kind of you know continuation 
I guess is the best way to say it. The thing that really stood out to me was some of the re like there's subtle redesigns on all the Thundercats, and I I liked it. Um, they didn't stray too far from the source material, which is good. But like, um, Tigra had kind of like this little mustache thing going, which I thought was interesting. Uh, Lionel looked pretty much the same. Um, you know, and the kids, Willy Kit and Willy Cat looked, um, or Wily Kit, Wily Cat looked the same. Uh, Slide looked pretty close. Uh, from what you could see of Mumra looked pretty close. I'm waiting to see the full form of Mumra. Um, Panthro and Chitara looked okay, you know, but there was like subtle little differences from what you've seen before. But I liked it. I thought Drew Moss was a good choice for the artwork on this. And, um, you know, lettering, uh, the colors, all of that looked good, you know. So I, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a well put together book, you know, Dynamite, they're, um, sort of like a company they remind me of like dark horse in the earlier days where they were just sort of taking ip and like making books about it you know because if you remember dark horse started with like aliens and predator and all that stuff and i feel like dynamite's the modern version of that you know so but i like seeing all these 80s properties come back so a couple of notes i jotted down about this thundercats number one like i did expressed this earlier when I was talking about the plot that, you know, I think this book is made more for a new fan and less of an old fan. Although I think old fans, depending on your mileage with this IP, I think you you'll either love it or you'll feel like me where you're kind of underwhelmed, you know, it's got a very different feel than I'd say like what Robert Kirkman's doing over at skybound with the inner John universe. Like I felt like, cause I read, I, if I got to make a comparison, I read Transformers number one, which essentially does the same thing this Thundercats issue one does, where it kind of retreads the same origin. But the difference is, is that the origin that they're retreading over there, they, they put a lot of different things in it. You know, one being that Megatron is not there. Um, Starscream is kind of leading the Decepticon, things like that. There was like major differences between even though the same events kind of happened, there was major things that were changed about it. And I think that's why it works. And I also like what they're doing with the GI Joe stuff where they're starting from like zero on that. And which you never really got to see like what GI Joe was like before they were a team, you know? So that all that stuff was kind of neat, you know? Um, the other thing I want to say is that I, I do like Declan Shalvey as both an artist and a writer. I think, um, He's actually a very solid writer. And, and um, some of the things that I've read by him, uh, Aliens, he's done a couple of Aliens miniseries for Marvel. And my wife loves the Alien stuff, so I usually buy that for her. But I've read it as well, and it was really good. It was a good take. Uh, it was like if Aliens were like on the planet Hoth, you know, <laughs> like this ice planet. And it was, it was kind of interesting take, different kind of, you know. St story ideas there with the alien universe but the book i really love by declan shalvey and I'll, I'll link it in the the thumbnail at the end here um i did a review of, of his old dog which is a comic he does for image and that's a comic he does write and draw it's really good really good sci spy comic you know about an old spy and and um you know finding his place in a world where everything's you know different and young you know um that's a great book and i highly recommend that i hope um i see these writing a lot more i hope he doesn't let that book uh you know die because i i like i like that a lot that's one of my favorites um the other thing i wanted to address and then dynamite's the worst on this is the covers oh my god i was like looking through the the bet the back of issue one and they put like a cover gallery for uh the amount of covers that they do and I, granted, half over seventy percent of these covers are what they call retailer exclusive covers, and like even the shop that I work at does this sometimes, where they can pay. I don't know how it works exactly, but they basically find an artist, and they can create their own store variant cover so i saw on the thundercats number one they had like a, you know 70 percent of the covers that they have for this thing are 
retailer variants and I, I had to get a calculator out and count how many covers they actually made for thundercats number one and it was a hundred and what was, the, what was the number here 128 covers i was like holy shit <laughs> you know just this cover thing is like a, a new epidemic in comics but like it's it's like um from what I understand, it's a kind of a necessary thing. Like the, you know, they try to get the collectors interested in getting these rare covers that stores have done. Some people like it though. I mean, like the, I see the collectors that come into my store, they buy some of these high end variant covers, you know, but dynamite doesn't help either. I mean, they got on their own, they had about 15 covers of their own, you know, it's just like, you know, like they, they put like cover a on the back and I think they were up to like, z on the alphabet or something you know so it's crazy um and they have retailers exclusives and all this other crap that goes with it I'm, I'm not into any of that so i i i so it's all foreign to me so i you know i guess your mileage with covers will vary but me just give me the comic i don't give a shit what cover it is it could be a blank sketch cover i, have, I don't care i just want to read it you know so that's that's where i stand on that stuff <laughs> But I get it. I mean, I know the industry's smaller than ever, and anything you got to do to make money, go for it. But I kind of wish they would go away from that stuff so people would try other books or spend that extra money on other comics to try or or whatever. But I will say that I do like this influx of like new 80s or 80s cartoons coming back as comics now. Like I feel like a, a kid again. And I'm eagerly awaiting Space Ghost number one, which is coming out from Dynamite. And I guess they're going to be doing Johnny Quest at some point. So uh, Keith's basically a happy boy right now. There's a lot of good comics coming out, you know, for just continuing those iconic uh, properties of my youth, you know. So, but yeah, that's pretty much it, everybody. Um, would I recommend this? I would say I would recommend if you are super super fan of thundercats i think you know you're gonna get everything you need from it um and like i said i think you know this one is one you got to give a few issues just to see where it's going which is what i'm gonna do but i you may find number one underwhelming but you know maybe stick with it and see if it gets better as it goes um other thing i wanted to mention the first issue is 4.99 the page count seems to be about the 25, 28 page uh, level. Um, it's in full color, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty standard. Like a lot of companies do the first issue $4.99 now. And then the number two will probably be $3.99. You know, that's what they kind of, they do a big launch and then they kind of settle into the regular price after that. So but yeah, so take uh, take my review with a grain of th salt. If you're a new fan, I think you may you may discover that you find uh, this cool new property. You know, um, otherwise, as an old fan, you may be underwhelmed like I was. So, but all right, everybody, thank you so much for listening and watching this review. We appreciate it here. Like, subscribe, share the channel if you think anyone will like this, and uh, join us every other Monday for our live streams. We have five in five weeks in a row of interviews coming your way. So we just, we get a lot of requests for cool guests and we can't turn them down. So we, have, we often break our schedule a lot. So I guess that's a good problem to have. So, all right, everybody have a great week. Uh, we'll talk to you later and read some comics.